Yeah, Jaguar is the featured mark today here at Capestone All Classic Car Show. So I think probably the first thing we'll do is wander over to the hall itself and just have a look and see at what cars are on display in front of the hall. I still can't see my youthful assistant anywhere. I'm sure he's videoing something for his car traction channel. So I'll probably see him about four o'clock later today. And that XK120 on the move. I don't think there was space for everyone in front of the hall. So I think they had to turn a few people back. Here's got that, that XK150 again. Oh, we're in front of the main hall now, the glorious Series 3 Jaguar Sovereign. What a beauty that is. The colour really sets that up. There's a mix of old and not so old Jags here, so I'll just have a quick scoot round and see what's here. Plenty of XKs, another Series 3. This one pops up at classic car shows quite, quite regularly. I think I saw that yesterday somewhere else. This is a V8, the X308. XJR, if the grill's anything to go by. XJS, Series 2, E-Type. Best types. There's that Dame Lewis all pulling in MIF 4. This one's just like Dad, same colour. Then what have we got here? Series 2 E-Type Roadster. You can always tell the Series 2 because I haven't got the covered headlights and they've got these big chunky indicators on the front. And this could actually be an import because it's left-hand drive and it's got these extra lamps on the wings like my MGB has got. I don't know if they have extra lamps at the back as well. Hmm. It's got the small back lights. Yeah. Lovely car. Lovely hall. And even the weather's starting to come on our side now. XJ40. Another E-type. A bit of a fan gathering there for car traction. Jaguar Mark II 1966. Disc brakes. That was to warn you not to get too close in traffic because uh, the Jag could probably stop a lot sharper than your, your typical Austin Cambridge that was driving along behind. A 65 fixed head. I know we saw this one driving in, but well, you can never have too much of a nice E type. Many more Jaguars. Look at the Mark II Series 1. They're a stunning car, aren't they? Well, there we go, there's a little whistle stop tour of all the classic Jaguars that are on display as part of Jaguar Day here at sunny Capes Thorn Hall in Cheshire. Quite the lineup. Nice Spitfire Mark II. It's 1967, early 1967 on an E. The Mark III that came out later the same year had the raised front bumper. Got a Mark I Lotus Cortina. This one featured in the video I did at Crew Heritage a little while ago, so if you want to know a bit more of the history of this one, dig out that particular video. A35. So what else have we got along here? Mark 1 Capri. MGB roads, they're complete with, I'm not sure what you call those. A bib on the front to protect the paintwork. Mm -hmm. Mark II Triumph 2500S. So that's the twin carb, two and a half litre engine under there. A Chimera TR4. Pontiac Firebird. DB5. 1964 Mark III Spitfires. This is slightly later than the one we're just looking at at the other end of the row. The Pontiac Catalina. Notchback Mustang, 1964. 
rubber bumper midget. This is that Mini we saw driving the Mi4. The Honda S2000 on the end. It's a nice assortment of classic performance Fords here. These were driving in before. We'll just have a quick scoot by. Just have a quick look, see what's here. The RS Turbo. The boy racers love those back in the day. They probably still do. Yeah, certainly, certainly filled up since when we got here. Didn't see these Heelys pulling in before. We've got a, a work style one here. Just avoid this man's camera. That looks like a lot of fun. Another E type. A modified Ford Anglia. Yeah, all good fun. A lightweight Land Rover. TR6 here. No fuel injection on this one though. Triple Webbers. I was going to get a TR6 myself. This is the one I'd get, this is a spec I'd get, I wouldn't be messing around with fuel injection. I'm sure it works well when it's working well. Uh, 66, is that a Zodiac? I'm guessing. A TF, Carmen converted VW Beetle, left hand drive. Another Citroen DS. What an amazing car there. Tell us about your That's incredible, that is. Ooh, the window's open, let's have a peek inside. There's a few cars in the arena they're talking about, so that's a wander away from there. Moggy Tour. A60 Cambridge. That's a great daily user that would be in the Bondi Keep. Look at that, fiberglass bodied. These are based on the Herald or the Vitesse, depending which model it is. <coughs> the doors are Herald based but with different frames, but the main door is off a of Herald and you can see the same bonnet catches are used. If you look closely at the bonnet catch, the M is for Michelotti, who originally designed the Heralds and the Spitfires and so on, on which this is based. So once these guys have gone, don't forget, it's port drive is convertible. Right. It's a rare car. A GT4S. So some of these have twin headlights either side, some are single headlights. You can see the Spitfire wheels, that gives away its parentage. Something does, something does, Jim, you're front set. Would you like to come against the Look at this, Corvette Stingray. I'm not entirely sure about Corvettes, but I do like these Stingrays. It's got the big 427 engine. What an incredible looking car, that is. When you bring your car into the arena, please stay with the car. It makes life easier, who remembers these? A Vauxhall VX 490, 1966. Again, a rare survivor. And the GT6 with its bonnet raised. So this, it's in standard form at any rate, would have the 2.0-litre straight six, although many have been retrofitted with 2.5s. Visually, they look pretty much the same, so I'm not quite sure, but I'm guessing this is the original 2.0-litre car. It would have had side screens on the side here just to protect the engine and all the electrics from road dirt and water sprayed up by the wheels. You can see why the sills and the front chassis legs rot out on these because they get directly blasted by road muck and grit and everything from the wheels directly in front of it. So uh, that's always a good, important place to look if you're planning on buying a Spitfire or even a Herald or, as in this case, a GT6. This is a Mark III GT6 with a squared off back end, same, well, very similar to the Mark IV and the 1500 Spitfires. Early Mark III's like this had the Rotorflex rear suspension and later they went to a simpler swing spring affair. <laughs> Fiat 500 and the Mark II console. It's a beauty in the 1950s. An article there, the registration 728 GDE.
proper Bobby Dazzler. But a few of you watching this uh, remember these two, the RS 1600i and the base model Ford Sierra. Well, it's not quite, I remember, but actually it's not quite the base model because the early Sierras had a sort of a paint, uh, like a grey plastic grill between the headlights. So it looks slightly different. So this isn't quite poverty spec three-door Sierra, but it's not far above it. It's such a rare survivor now, great though. E30, various moderns lurking away in the long grass there, but I don't think we'll tie up too much time with those. This is a classic car channel, so I don't really want to dwell too long on the later cars. Great and immaculate as they are. We passed this P1800S as we were driving in before. What a lovely colour that is. It's great to see one that isn't done up as a Saint replica as well. Dark green, mini lights, really suit it, I think. The Moggy convertible here, 1965. The singer Vogue, badge engineered Hillman Minx or Hillman Hunter, late 1960s. These were made for many years, or rather the, the version of the Minx and the Hunter was made for many years. It's the Paycan in Iran, if I remember right. The Mark 1 Escort. Moggy pickup, nice. It's got the correct bonnet on it as well. Sometimes you see the vans and the pickups and they've got the saloon bonnets on because if you look at this Morris Traveller alongside you'll see it's got this beading, this raised moulding along here and sometimes you see incorrectly restored vans and pickups with the same bonnet on but to be correct it should be like that and the beading runs along the door but for some reason he decided not to include the beading on the bonnets fitted to the vans and the pickups so that's correct not that it really matters but it's nice to have things right. Really nice MGA, Stafford registration. MGB GT, nice registration on that. Yeah, yeah. Nice pair of Lucas lamps as well. As I talked about in another video, when the MGs first came out, they had the chrome grille that came here, sort of flush with the front of the bonnet, and this lined up with the the badge that ran below but then they put this recessed plastic grill on just for a short time so this was still on the bonnet but it didn't actually line up with anything so that's a bit of a sort of a throwback to the earlier mgbs then they changed the grill again after this because these recessed ones didn't prove to be very popular and a lot of people have replaced them with full chrome grills now but it's good to see this one being correct triumph stag another mark ii console wow I do like 50s cars, they're a great combination of style and still being usable. And the Bullnose Cowley, another pre-war gem lurking within all the classic cars. You can see how they got the Bullnose name from the shape of the radiator. That was changed in the late 1920s and they became known as the flat nose cars. But this is the Bullnose of sort of 25, 1926 or thereabouts. The Cowleys had three stud wheel mountings and the Oxfords, a slightly posher version, had five stud wheel fixings. And you can see the speedo drive on the here as well. So there's no brakes on the front and you've got this big gear wheel inside of the wheel there running on this gear wheel here and then it connects via that cable up to a speedometer that's presumably somewhere inside. Let's have a quick look, see if we can see it. Oof. Wow, isn't that beautiful? There's a speedo just on the left. Isn't that wonderful? You're dressed to match it, aren't you? Yeah, Lucas King of the Road. One of the first cars I saw pulling in was this Thames 307E 500 weight van. It was based on a contemporary Anglia saloon, but very different otherwise. Apart from the front end, looks similar, but some of the saloons had this very simple style of front end, but most had the full width grille, but some of the very, very basic Anglia saloons had this sort of pressed metal affair. As I pointed out before on these cars, 
An interesting feature of the Thames van is how the, rear, the door kinks up, lifts up at the rear. And that was in order that when you were doing deliveries with your little Anglia van, you could pull up, swing the door open, and there'd be less chance of the back edge of the door clobbering the kerb. So it was a good idea. It seemed that idea's dropped out of favour because right. it seems to be eminently sensible to me. But commercials are really rare. And often, even when you see a restored commercial, sometimes the sides look a bit wavy because they've had loads banging around inside. And if you've got a van that's got wobbly sides, they're quite hard to rectify. So uh, it's nice when you see them as straight as that. I'm guessing it's had a fairly easy life or an excellent restoration or probably a bit of both. Right, let's carry on. TR4A. Mm, smart looking modified MGB. Good grief, what's that? A marina van. It's a very 70s custom style job. That's quite neat, isn't it? I like that. Huge wheels on the back. Yes, a marina van. Yeah. Right. yeah, it's like a V6, isn't it? Out of, I don't know, Ford or something, isn't it? Many, many horns. All different lengths, so they all do different. Probably plays a tune. A really smart Rover 2000 here. Bit of information, that's always good. Twin carb, 113 brake horsepower. And by, and by one family for the first 30 years, covered 26,000 miles in that time. And only averaged 1,000 miles a year in total. Never welded, had partial respray after being vandalised down the sides. It was like the Citroen DS. All these panels came off, you could even unbolt the roof. The rear quarters. I'm talking of DS's, there's one behind it. And again, these, you could, you've got like the central structure of the body and all the outer panels came off. It's not unknown for people to uh, put immaculate panels on a car with a very dodgy structure and from a distance they probably look quite smart. But when you sort of peel off the outer panels and so on, the truth is often revealed. But no, this looks like a beautiful example of the fairly early P6. These have the nice metal grills on the front. Later ones have like a plastic, a sort of egg crate type grill. And next to that, we've got a great little Healy Sprite Mark 1. Yes. I think normally the bonnets hinge the other way, don't they? Don't they normally hinge at the back? Because this is more like a Spitfire, isn't it? Hmm. And here, Mark III GT6, another one. We had the red one before, or orange one before. Now we've got a blue one. It's an MGA over there. MGA. Twin cam engine. Oh, that one there. Yeah. Oh. So it's got Alpha engine, is it? Good grief. <laughs> well, that looks, what a lovely looking engine that is, isn't it? And the hold on, that's been in there. Yeah, twin cam. Yeah, well, of course, there was the proper MGA twin cams back in the day, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, is this yours, sir? Couldn't avoid being a bit cheeky with the <laughs> <twin cam. laughs> That's great, though. So did you did you put the engine yeah. in? Did you? Right. No. How long ago was it? A recent uh, thing? Or? About four years ago, I think. Oh, right, right. Yeah. right. So what was what was the thinking behind it? Was the original engine lacking? I've owned the MGA for about 30, oh, 40, over forty years. <laughs> Never very happy with the um, performance. So was it fifteen or sixteen hundred before? Right. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And then a friend of mine was moving to France and clearing his garage out. <laughs> did I want the engine box for one hundred twenty-five pounds? So. Be rude not to, wouldn't it? Yeah, so I thought, <laughs> I'll have a go at that. Did it take a lot of shoehorning in then? We had to cut the bulkhead mm. right. and, re and reinforce it again. The gearbox, is that the Alpha or the. The Alpha box. It's the Alpha box, right? The speed box, yeah. And you just yeah. have the prop modified to suit, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> yeah. A special, is a radiator made specially for it, I'm guessing? Or? Uh, no, it's just an like alloy a MGA. Oh, right, right. So it's right, an off the yeah. shelf sort of thing. It does it? run rather hot though. <laughs> That wouldn't be great coming in here today then, would it? Because there was a lot of electric fans running on cars coming in today. It's rather hard. It, the engine seems very hot, but it's, mm. the, the temperature's showing OK. Right, right, right. Uh, you have to put some louvers in the bonnet. Yes, I did wonder about that. <laughs> yes, get let some heat out. That's great, that yeah. is. I like that. Yeah. I like that. 
I've added in the three tuners, it's only just, it still spits and pops when it's because they're cold. Are they Webbers, are they? No, they're Delotos. Delotos, yeah. Right, yeah. Right, right, yeah. yeah. But I'm finding now if I drive it like an Italian and really <laughs> rag it everywhere. The Italian tune up. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it performs okay though. <laughs> Rather than just graduating, yeah, you yeah, as well as booting it. Give it some welly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's great, that, isn't it? Uh, I guess it transformed it as a drive. Oh, yes, it's certainly a powerful engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, what was the power output like before, do you think? Sort of with the 1600? Uh, they're only well, they're like 90, 80, 80 and 90 yeah. in that range, aren't they? Yeah. Well, where where do you reckon this is? At least 120, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe towards 130. It must be a bit lighter as well, I'm guessing. I don't know. Possibly, just yeah. a touch. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's touch. a lot of fun, that is. <laughs> yeah, great stuff. What do we have here? Maxi, but not just any Maxi. This is a left hand drive Maxi. Left hand drive? Yeah, I was just saying. I don't know what the story with that is. The yellow lamps. In fact, I'd be quite honest, a few years ago. Maestro and the Metro Turbo. I don't see too many of those. <laughs> Toyota Sierra. Sierra? Sarah? Is that an Eclipse? It's a Toyota Sierra or something, oh, sorry. I think. Right. Pretty wild doors on that one. Capri Laser. The Capri 280, last of the line V6s. It's a Minter, isn't it? That's a smart one, that, isn't it? And another one. So what's this, a Griffith? There we are. 1996 TVR Griffith 500. Engine well set back in the engine bay there, isn't it? Get the weight distribution right, but it's quite a stretch to work on, isn't it? Mm, it's not too bad, but... It's <laughs> a 500. Sunbeam Lotus. Hiding away behind these people here. Cavalier, Rep's favourite. Hermsha um, modified. It's that Vector, isn't it? Mm. MGB. Automatic gearbox. Any success? I don't see too many autos, so I'll quick peek inside and see what they look like. Oh, yeah, automatic shifter. No, I mean, they are. They're an unusual car with the VX220s. I mean, it was a, in many ways, an unexpected Vauxhall. And that was the problem with them. No one expected Vauxhall to find an MGC with a bonnet up. Look at that. Triple carbs, three litre. There's 300 of these, there's 300 of the turbo left on the Took some shoehorning in, that did. A rare car now, and something I'm really proud of. It's nice to see. Thanks very much for bringing it here again. Because I know, I know one of the problems with them is they are, because we said they're quite a fragile. <laughs> yeah, they do suit it. Well, it's a Vectra 2.2 engine. Suspension's pretty standard. There's a Rover 3.5 powered MGB here. It's a big engine in a small space. Quite a convoluted air intake route. You've got the carburetors at the back up there, and then it goes round here, through here, where the filter is, down here. Really nice example. Let's see what else we've got on this row. An Elise Mini, complete with rally chopper. Thank you very much for bringing it in. Right. Remember having one of those. Nova Club, limited edition Vauxhall Nova. Still got the brochures for these somewhere. The Astra and the Nova Club. Oh, look at that interior. Can you imagine trying to recreate that now if you were restoring a bad one of these? I think you'd really struggle, I bet, to get that material. Isn't there? Are they uh, probably even seat covers, possibly, aren't they? Less than 19,000 miles. 19,000? Well, over here, one of the seven alike. Sporty cars, a Westfield, one of the better seven lookalikes, a Rover 400, rare to see a good one, a Marlin, another Marlin kit car, XK8, now let's have a look at that giant Jupiter down here, it's a bit of a bobby dazzler, let's go and have a look at that, yeah I know, but I'll have a look at the Alpha in a minute, I wanted to have a look at this Jowett, wow, look at that. So you've got the boxer engine, the four-cylinder boxer engine, hiding away under there. 
Same engine as the Javelin, pretty much. Radiator behind the engine. Really interesting little cars, these in the Javelins. Um, the chassis was designed by a guy that worked for the... Uh, it's quite neat, that, that isn't, nice, isn't it? A very lofty. Did the bonnet go further up than I would have thought it might do. I was going to say, that's a stupid bit to... Look in there. Jow, it did things their own way in the late 40s. I mean, obviously they're around pre-war as well, but in the late 40s they came out with the Jupiter Sports and the Javelin Saloon as well. What a swoopy car that is. Just look at the lines on that. What a beauty that is. That's a real beauty, that. I love that. So that's a 1953 car, this one. <laughs> I was worried I'd be able to get into it after I had it. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> well, it looks horrible with that black light, that is all odd. What, on the, on the wheels? No, on the wheels. Oh, so, oh yeah. Stone ship. Such an idiosyncratic car. Looking at subscribe them. to Car <laughs> No. We've got a Granada here. It says five litre. Wow. Maybe there's something happening under the bonnet of that one. But I've been told to go and have a look at an Alfa Romeo. So look at an Alfa Romeo. I must do. Alfa Romeo 2000, early 1970s. A 105 car. Beautiful. These are lovely, aren't they? Just such a stylish. Italian classic. Yeah, so it's got the four headlamps this era. I think I prefer that to the DB5. You prefer it to the DB5? It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a very dainty car, isn't it? Look at that, even the Alpha, proper Alpha door mirror. See the Alpha door mirrors? See the little logo set into the chrome work. Now that's actually not correct because it's not a sprint but <laughs> Yeah, it does. It just looks so good. I like the maps in the rear window. Yeah, the lovely. So those two singers we saw pulling in, the nine, nine coupe and the singer Vogue. There's a rover over here. Let's have a look at that. P3, I think, post-war. Obviously a pre-war design, basically. The pre-war cars have spoked wheels. Post-wars, P3s, have these solid disc wheels and slightly wider grills compared to the pre-war P2s. But this is a sports saloon. And the way you can tell it's a sports saloon is because the, it's got a slightly lower roof line and only two, door, uh, two windows rather per side. There's no extra window in the rear quarter there. So it's a, it's a low roof line and it's a four light design. That's what you call it, four light. I.e. two, I know it says light, but... Yeah, very elegant, very swish cars. Proper quality stuff back in those days for Rover. Don't make them like they used to. Built to last, Sonny. <laughs> I remember when this was, was it? Uh, or indicators, yeah, or something. Yeah. But they're very sleek. These sports saloons are quite sleek, I think. Much lower roof line. Yeah. Very nice car indeed. Plenty of chrome still, of course, of which we approve. Lucas P700s. Eh? Yeah, King of the Road. Rover 60. Your Nick Sunshine. Many, many Morrises, that's good to see. So, when we went to Western Park, we actually commented that we didn't see that many Morris Miners, so it's, it's nice to see a few. We've got some BL Stroke, Austin Rover goodness along here. We've got a Montego Estate, Maestro, various Rover 100s or Metros. As far as the eye can see. 
There's cars every which way you look at the moment. MGBs. I have to put the roof up on that road still if these are spots of rain or anything to go by. A couple of GTs and an MGF. A TF and one of these X Powers. These are a pretty wild car. Last gasp of interesting MGs. SVR. Yeah. It's quite a machine, isn't it? More MGFs and TFs. MGB Roadster. Originally rubber bumpered, it's been converted to chrome bumpers and the ride height lowered to make it match the earlier Bs. So I'm going to stroll along this line, have a quick shuffle to see what's here. There's an XR4 I saw driving in before, lowered slightly. Quite an interesting car, V6. Hello. The 34 BMW 525i. What's that? Only <laughs> under 100,000 miles. Mm -hmm. Quite a job to keep a red car from fading. So, top work. MR2 is a Tickford bodied Capri. Yeah, a neighbour of ours had one of these back in the early 1980s, a Tickford Capri. Yes. 924S. VW, VR6. Mm, the Golf had the VR6, didn't it? And the Corrado had it. <laughs> Looks like fun, doesn't it? Super clean inside. Look at that interior. Wow. Scooters on the move. Lots of Jaguars and MGs from Porsches as far as the eye can see and also this fantastic Crayford modified Mark II Cortina convertible 1967-ish or early 68 Nice period cosmic alley wheels the Standard two door Well I say standard, it looks standard from outside It's got a Ford Duratec and ST engine in it on throttle bodies, so I'm guessing that it's probably quite perky. So, visually, with the bonnet down, I don't know, but the bonnet down, apart from those really nice sort of Lotus Cortina style wheels, they did look good it looks ones. really, yeah, yeah, it looks really standard from the outside, but probably su surprises quite a few people in the traffic like Grand Prix. <laughs> the TVR, is that Cerbera with the roof, or Speed, or speed 6? I don't, don't know what that is. With Mazdas. That's 2CV6 Beach Coma that we saw driving in before. Very bonny. There's our BRM Rover, tuned up version, the Rover 200. Sierra Azura. <laughs> Some beam told them. That's nice. Festival of Britain, that was 1951. Ooh. Picnic sets, old cameras. Isn't that nice? Old, old currency even. Oh, see, it's got the column. Yeah, column change. The yeah. driving gloves on the column change. <laughs> Correct uh, currency there. <laughs> 1957 Sunbeam Mark III Saloon. There we go. Another quality car from the sort of early post-war era. Nice badges, That's I like nice. these. BARC. Nice. Yeah. Well, a proper Desmo Clips note. Nice spot lamps. Devils in the detail. Yeah, nice Lucas lamps. One spot, one fog. Yeah, one's a spot, one's a fog. Pembrokeshire Vintage Car Club. Yeah, it's lovely. All the curves in that front end. All these curves, no brakes and no panel joins, no visible panel joins anyway. Possibly loaded, lead loaded up under there. 
You've got suicide doors at the back. There are the handles. Sort of blend into the side strips that run down the side. Just very neat, but lovely interior. Roots Group did some fantastic interiors back in the 1950s. Okay, let's walk up here in the general direction of sandwiches. Mark II and Mark I RS 2000. Oh, sorry. Yeah. All is not original under there, I suspect. Yeah, this looks more. Three gear. Is it a gear? Is it? Yeah. yeah I guess the, the jazzy paint and the vinyl roof. That's a sign of a gear, I imagine. Uh, One point six. So 1.6 gear. Sorry. Yeah. So that was the plush escort of the day. H and J quick. I remember them. <laughs> it's quite late. V reg. That's the same registration as the RS two thousand. We see at Alton Park sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah the, the yellow, the yellow one. Yeah. CF camper, or CF2. 1985. It's for sale. If anyone wants a CF camper van, there you go. There's all the details. V8XJ. Triumph stag in white with Mark II alley wheels on it. One, two, four Mercedes, Alpha. VW based buggy. Myers Manx, Myers Manx, is it? Is that what it is? I don't know. I bow to your knowledge in these things. <laughs> it's quite glittery. There you go. They do all sorts of like buggies and things. Yeah, I've heard of them. Designed for California where you never get rain on your uh, <laughs> distributor cap, unlike here. Yeah. The E30 BMW, very classy car now. You know, when you think what BMWs look like nowadays, these are sort of understated, simple, still quite classy designs. Crisp, isn't it? It's just neat compared to the hideous things they make now. Yeah. Straight they're lovely. Back. That's why these are becoming so so popular, really, isn't it? Because yeah. it's like that's why I think about the Mark IV and Five Quarteen. They just look mm. quite good because they're straight lines. Yeah, it's a proper three-box saloon, yeah. isn't it? It's none of these sort of blobby, blobby, indistinct, horrible things. Yeah, like the Mark V really Escort there. Thank you very yeah. much. We often wonder what's hiding in these race car trailers that you see going up and down the country. Ooh. Very nice four-door Alpha. Bit of info here, it's for sale, 29,950, Alpha 1600, Bolino Doro, Julia Super, 1965. Hmm, that's nice. Right, when did, when did he come into the UK? Still Italian registered. Because compared to what he can buy next to it, it's quite a tough call. <laughs> a large contingent of mercs here today, some modern and some interesting. Right, so my. Compare those two. The 250 SL, the CLK. Yeah, yeah, well. <laughs> now, my sandwich detection monitoring system tells me we need to head in a northwesterly direction past this array of auto jumble over here, many, many panels, and a variety of American cars, which I'll have a look at later. That automobile drove in before that two door. This is neat, isn't it? All sorts here. If your car's here at the meeting, uh, please pop a note in the comments and say hello. Uh, apologies if I don't feature every car that's here, but I think there's talk of about so six, seven, eight hundred cars here today, up, so uh, further further can't away. really feature them all. From so I'm just having a bit of a whiz round just to see what we can see. The Mighty Buick, 1958, right. I think. I'm hoping to find. Peter the Judge. Mercury. He's done. Well done. Right. Yes. Food beckons. Back soon. Right. In second place in the... My junior assistant has spotted oil cans. So what is it? A Brames. Brame. It's just bonny, isn't it? What's the price on that? Uh, <laughs> We're going to do a bit of haggling. Yeah. Best of luck. That's all that. 
Very nice spot in the car park, RS2000. Very nice indeed. It's like a oh, back to the old cars and here, no Jaguar 3.4 or the Mark 1 as they're more often called now. 1959 Jag 3.4 saloon. Very nice indeed. You could have the 2.4 or the 3.4 Mark 1. Very similar to the Mark 2, but subtly different. Much thicker window pillars, smaller back window, different lights at the front. So 1970 to 1979! Please oh bring your dear. cars in now, you are in the final category before we get to take a small break. I'll time that badly right next to uh, one of those uh, speaker things. Right. There's that old mobile that came in before. T-Bird, early 1960s. I'm going to risk life and limb and go near that microphone thing again. So I can just walk through here. Let's have a look at that 3.4 again while it's quiet. Painted wires. Looks just right. No chrome wires here. It's nice body colour green painted wire wheels. The racy wing mirrors. Just looks bob on that. Just needs a few louvers and a bonnet and some leather bonnet straps and off you go. Oh, there is a leather bonnet strap. Interesting, it's got a badge for 3.8 on it. So it looks like it started out as a 3.4 and it's been upgraded to a Mark II's engine. And a few 70s cars going into the arena now. Oh, there's that Austin Princess again. So I remember these back in the BL dealer in Cheadle, Reeds of Cheadle. Right, 1970 to 1979, we've only got four, come on, there's plenty more out there, I can see a few from here. So 70 to 79, and then... Right, well, sandwiches devoured, let's plough on, suitably fortified for the task in hand. It's a much accessorised A35. Don't let him drive it. <laughs> Just great little cars. Lots of many, many badges. Let's have a closer look. Skegness. Butlins Heg Skegness. What have we got down here? There's a Bond bug revealing its uh, entry and exit arrangements. Pretty wild, that isn't it? Mm. Super clean E28 that we saw driving in before. Same with this bay window, a couple of bay window campers. There's that Rover, the estate version of the P6 3.5. An amazing car that is, so it follows the roof line of the saloon, tapering down as it does so. It's neat, isn't it? Is that SE five A? Indeed. Five two five E this five series. The five two five E was the, the economy version, that was the idea of that. Um, it was had higher gearing and so on, sort of reduce your engine revs at a given speed. The idea being to be a little bit more economical than your typical five two fives or five two eight I's and so on. 
There's that TR with the roof. There's that, there's that Cortina pickup. It's very neat. I don't see too many Roots cars at shows, so I think we need to give a bit of time over to this Humber. A gaggle of badges and lamps there on the front. Let's have a look. There aren't too many of these around now. The Hawk it was kind of the entry level version, and you got the Super Snipe, and later you had the Imperial. The Imperial had selectable suspension on it, so you could adjust the firmness setting. I think just of the rear dampers, if memory serves, but I'm sure someone will know. The Imperials also had a vinyl roof, four headlights at the front. That's really nice. Mark III GXL, we saw that one driving in before. A kit car, a Royale, I think that is. Very smart Beetle. Next up a 1967 Citroen DS, the Goddess. Rally 1.5, so under here, under the bonnet. We've got a twin carb set up on the B Series 1500 or 1489 cc engine to be precise. So your Wolseley just had a single carb, and this, the sportier version, had the twin carbs. Sliding steel sunroof. Eh? Just on my way down to looking at that grey Somerset. But I just wanted to have a look at this XJR. I had one of these, mine was a V8. Supercharged XJ, this is a six cylinder car. Eh? Yeah, it's a Willis Whippet or something, isn't it? Yeah. I do like these very stylish Jag saloons. Let's go back to the early 1950s and that really nice Austin Somerset. Like I said before, original registration still. Fantastic. Proper old plates as well, blue mills. We like original registrations on old cars. Because these grills were made out of Mazak and then chromed up. But they often start pickling up. Oh, so I've just had a battery change, so Austin Somerset early to mid 1950s these were column chains the chassis was based on that of the a40 devon same engine the 1200 engine and you also had the a40 sports which was like a two-door convertible based on the same chassis and running gear albeit with twin carburetors Dear. a bit more sedate a rover p6 2000 very nice too very classy car Designed with gas turbine propulsion in mind. But never, never sold with that engine or propulsion system. We had the choice of 2 litres, 2.2, or the 3.5 litre V8. I'll never let it be said I don't feature later classics and retro cars on the channel. So, turbo 16 valve. So the booted saloon version, four-door saloon, because the hatchbacks are probably more commonplace nowadays. Slopey front, the earlier ones had a flatter front on them. Yeah, pretty cool. The sun's coming out as well, sun shines on the righteous. There's that 1300 front wheel drive. These are quite neat because I remember the window winders sort of fold into the door and then you ping them out to use them and then you push them back in again. Eh? I'm talking about window winders on 1300s, don't they sort of ping in and out of the door? You yes. sort of pull it out to, yeah, yeah. I knew that's the one thing I can remember about 1300. So is this going online, is it? It might do, yeah. I'll, I'll, t I'll tell them about it, I'll watch them all. The old classic car channel. Because I'm the one with the orange marine and everybody in mm. suits. <laughs> So is this yours then? No, this is John's, the Metro's map. Oh right, but right. you right. wouldn't know it because Josh is always in it. <laughs> <laughs> Next to the Triumph, we've got this lovely old Dodge we saw pulling in before, the Dodge Victory 6. Look at that. So I think it said on the back 1928. Let's have a peek. Some of the side screens are out. Let's go have a look in there. Joshua! There we go. 
to right hand drive like mine is. I wonder if there's another one from Australia. It's always possible, isn't it? Tight fit for those twin carbs. Oh, let's go see what gems this row yields. Strange Nissan, not sure what that is. There's the cosy. Some bits and bobs for sale here. Anything we need. Some little spirit level for you though. <laughs> I've got so many. And this is this uh, console classic with the uh, period roof load on a nice old uh, roof rack as well. And a nice clip on stadium rear view mirrors. It just clips on the uh, window, window pillar there. Wolf race alloys. Who's that Mark III Zodiac Estate? Good heavens. Perfect for any budding antiques dealers. A gaggle of minis, Morris Cooper, Dunlop Alleys. My uncle had those on his uh, mini based Cox GTM. He built that up in the early 1970s. Mini running gear, but the engine was in the back. But they had the same wheels, and I've still got one of those centre caps in the garage. That's the only thing we've got left. Do you remember the old GTM buy? There's that Nissan S cargo at the end. What a groovy thing that is. Bit of glamour here. It was me thinking this was a Maserati when it pulled in, but it's a Di Tommaso. I know, I know, but it was a long way away. Bodied by gear. Gear was a coach building firm until Ford took it on and used the name just for their posh versions of the Fiestas and such like. Isn't this lovely? A Vespa. A Vespa 400. Wow. Reminds me of that roof. Reminds me of the Fiat Topolino. Look how dainty these door handles are. Tiny. There's the mighty power plant. High speed tyres. Still so many cars to see. I say apologies if your car's here and I didn't get around to including it, but I'll do my best. There's that lovely little angle with the wider Cortina Lotus style wheels. Mini, Mini Cooper. Mark 1 Escort, Fruity Arches. Another Lotus Cortina. Another early one, the pre airflow car. No, you're right, yeah. Yeah, so it's early ish. But. The first ones were console. Yeah, the first ones were console. Lovely four door 1100 Escort there. There's that Triumph Roads that we saw driving in before, and this. There would be a seat in there. And there's the screen and the raised position to give you a bit of uh, protection from the elements. As long as you weren't sat in traffic and it started raining, you'd probably be alright. Wow. Lovely shape, isn't it? That's it, King of the Road. It's a Triumph Roadster. I'm not sure if they're 1800 or 2 litre, I'm not quite sure. Oh, we've got a Riley here, one of the Farina Rileys, 1966, on banded wheels. I don't think they're TR6 wheels, but they would fit on. No, they're not TR6. Oh, this could either be a 468 or a 472. I don't know what year they did the changeover. This is a 472, the slightly later car. Let's just have a quick scoot round here and just see what gems are in this furthest corner of the field. Lotus Elan, is that Reliant Kitten? Was it, it was under the door? Was it was under the door. Yeah. <laughs> That's neat, isn't it? 
RS Turbo. A bit, a bit later cars down there. Let's go and have a mooch down here towards the water. A few MGs lurking over there. Why are they called those Jowitts? The ones with the bonnets? That's the Jupiter. Oh, Jupiter. Oh, right, okay. Let's go and have a look at it. Yeah, nice. Jowitt number two. I was hoping to see a javelin today, but there isn't one. So we'll have to make do with a pair of Jupiters instead. That's no hardship. Again, matching pair of fog and spot lamps on the front. And there's the bonnet catches down there. And you can just rear hinged and get at it all. Wow. Yeah, it was quick. I've just seen something. What have you seen? Saab. Yes, that, <laughs> that's a pretty wild looking thing, isn't it? Saab 99 Combi Coupe on EMS alley wheels. EMS was the fuel injected version of the Saab 99. It was the posh one until the turbo came along. That looks so cool. <laughs> Certainly a neat colour, isn't it? Yeah. On a P reg, such a rare car that is. Headlamp wipers as well. By far the most astounding thing of it has to be the headlamps. That's, mm, the, that's the great, best aren't they? Thing. It's like having a little man in there, isn't it? Not like yeah. a little window cleaning man just there with his. Uh, and you expect a little squeegee to come out and a little leather to just wipe the yeah. wipe the glass over. That's great, then. Made in Trollhattan. Pattern of Land Rover here. Good grief. Series 2. Look at that. Proper oily ragger. Very cool 70s Merc. Early 1970s 220D. It's a diesel power. The PA Cresta, look at that. Two tone blue. Just look at the seat covers in there. <laughs> well, it couldn't be more 1950s if you tried. Zephyr. It's a Zodiac. Yes, so you got the Zephyr, the six cylinder, and the Zodiac was top of the pile. Magnificent picnic set there. That interior. A beautiful car that is. Big straight six there. Midget. Is that Sunbeam Raper I caught a glimpse of pulling in before? There's something you don't see too often. M Reg, so what early mid 1990s, Shropshire registered Skoda favourite. <laughs> Quite a neat design, really. Look at that rear window louvre. Proper 90s, 80s, 90s accessory. There's the finned 59 Cadillac, saw driving in before. Gingerly driving down the grass entrance road down there. There's Mark 1 Transit with a side door. It's neat to see. And there's the bull front or the bull nose front, I think. And the classic Range Rover, two doors, all the early ones were. And a few more retro cars along here. That's just a great colour for a Mark 2. Next to the Dodge Charger 500, there's that Cadillac Beerit we saw Brooke pulling in before. So what does it say there? California, 1956. Wow. You get through a few tins of Simon Eyes with this one. The Thunderbird next to it almost looks restrained by comparison. A few years newer, this one. Six cylinder PA Cresta, lovely burble there. This low slung Marcos in the long grass looks like it's been parked there for months. Same for the MGB. The gentleman's machine there. Moggy Thousand. What a 
we got up here. All right, the little covers over the mirrors. Under the trees, we've got a 944. A few Jaguars. Got a Series 3 E type, so it's V12. That could be manual, it could be auto. Don't know which. There we go, manual, so it's a manual V12. Smell of two stroke in the air as the little scooters and things potter off into the distance. X Reg Escort, five door. Looks like a very clean car. Hiding away under the trees here. I hope there's not too much sap coming down. A very clean car. You don't see too many of these without the arches full of rot back in the day and rotting away around the filler cap. Sills used to disintegrate the battery tray, used to rot on these. I seem to remember. So, any good solid survivors of these are probably pretty thin on the ground now. One of the little scimitar SS ones. Everything appears to be fairly standard with this HP Viva four-door saloon. G Reg. Until you get round the back and you look under the back, there's a very smart stainless two-pipe system poking out under there. Does that suggest things aren't maybe quite as normal as you'd expect under the bonnet? Who knows? Looks very standard in here. Mm. Nice 911 here, now I'm conscious that this video is probably going to run on a little bit so if you're still with me thank you very much because uh, I always set out with uh, trying to do a video that isn't too long but when there are so many cars you kind of get a bit drawn into it all. Not just a normal Volvo 240 or 260 but the 262C. These were bodied by Bertone with a much lower roof line, two door car, look at that. I think they typically, they usually, I think, had a vinyl roof. Do you? Yeah. Is this yours? It's mine. Is it? Fantastic. It's, um... Did they have vinyl roofs? They did until the end. I thought they did, yeah. yeah. So how many are left, do you reckon? Uh, nine in the UK. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> so did Bertone build them, or did they do Bertone, the body and then uh, shift uh, it back? They were shifted from uh, Gothenburg to... Um, As a standard saloon. Uh, yeah, that, yes, so and then Bertone did all this stuff. Right, so they converted and then, it all Have then. you seen the inside? Not this one, no. Well, very plush, isn't it? Wow, yes. <laughs> Good grief. Look at those seats. This is Fiat Uno Turbo IE Corner. The Uno Turbo IE. Anti-skid. Nice registration. <laughs> How clean that is in there. I can't walk past this little Fiat 900e camper that we saw driving in before without having a quick shafty at it. So you've got the side entrance door here, a pop up roof for added headroom. <laughs> so look, oops. It's quite spacious in there, isn't it? Perfect for a weekend away. <laughs> I don't see too many brown Dolly sprints, but there's one here. My name is Dolly. Quite a gathering of Triumph saloons around here. There's another one of those Triumph front wheel drive 1300s here. 
excuse me, can I just take a picture of the inside? Yep. I saw this one driving in before, an Austin badged and radiator grilled version of the Morris Minor van. God, look how shiny that is. Yeah, it's the Austin, yes, you know. That was just to keep Austin dealers happy and... Yeah, Ripley grill. Uh, there was a lot of brand loyalty. Yeah, there was a lot of brand loyalty back in the day and people wouldn't buy a Morris if they'd always bought Austin. So uh, it was a fairly simple job just to make a grill, an Austin grill, an Austin badge to go on the front and then you could put them in Austin dealerships nice wiring loom as well the proper the old braided wire and again a proper bonnet without the beading on the side it's all good and these are the separate chassis so the, the saloons are monocoque the travellers had the wooden frame on the back, and these are the separate chassis. Well, that's clean. Let's see, Hyacinth Bouquet is here. A TV series back in the day. They drove around in one of these Rovers. Maestro alongside. Austin Rover Corner. Wow, look at this Ford Thunderbird. So, so 1970s, complete with a flip up rotating uh, headlamp things there. God, two door. Diamond Jubilee edition. There's a few down here, let's just have a quick scoot down here. That's, that's nice, I like, I like that. What's that, 80s, something like that, 1983 according to the tag. Now, guys of the 80s, another XI4. And a Mercury. Late this was a Ford brand, as I remember. Left hand drive. This Mercury is quite modest by comparison. Just out of interest, the Sierra pickup as they tend to be called. Are you coming into the arena or has it just been parked there? Uh, is there any reason why it's there? Certainly a lot more subtle than Mercury, slightly older as well. Compared to this mighty 58 Buick, incredible cars. I mean, it's not, it's a bit new for me, but I mean, just the styling, the optimism that the designers had back in that era to come up with cars of this design. And usually just for one season, then the next year, 59, it'd be different again, and 60, it'd be different again. But right. the chrome was just incredible. Any more for any more. Ah. And the bullnose right. Morris has got the bonnet the up. Let's have a quick peek under the bonnet. Four cylinder side valve engine. There's the magneto hung off the front. Under 100,000 miles, M Tech body kit, on garage, a new sailing. Stainless steel exhaust, the original. There's the fuel filler. Right. So you have to pop the bonnet up to uh, top <laughs> it up with fuel. There you go, here's the history file for the car. And next to this tastefully modified Ford Pop is that lovely little Austin 7 Ruby we saw driving in before. And as it's parked up here, I can't just walk past and ignore it. What a beautiful little car. I just noticed this pop, this hot rolly pop, it's got the pre-war headlamp lenses. These are super rare to find now. These were fitted on, I can't remember if it was the Ford 8s or the Ford 10s of the sort of mid, you know, mid, late 1930s. But they're seriously rare to find now. That is gorgeous. Yeah. 633. Delightful little Jowett Jupiter's on its way home. 
Isn't that stunning? Does anyone remember this? Now you'll have to forgive me because in the previous Cape Sun video in 2021 I did actually look at this car and I also focused on this wonderful exhaust trim but, um, it's such a unique thing, I've never seen another Well one or two cars are starting to leave now, there's a few gaps on this mighty big field so I think I think we've probably walked around most of the cars that are here and I'm already concerned that this video is going to be much longer than I planned as usual so I think we'll probably wrap things up oh, this Dita Marzo is quite something isn't it 1971 it's quite a wild looking car isn't it Anyway, I think we'll wrap up this particular video here at Cape Thorn Hall on a, well, what turned out to be a largely sunny and very warm day in the grounds of Cape Thorn Hall. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'm just going to have another ogle over this wonderful little Vespa 400 and then I think we will go home. There'll be more videos along very, very soon, so please keep an eye on the channel. And there'll be more videos along very, very soon. So bye for now.